I did want to address some of the things you talked about in your video um, because it has been quite the week. I remember last week before the election, Poe party had ended, Edgar Allan Poe's murder mystery dinner party, and they released a secret epilogue and they released it a day ahead for people that could figure out this whole puzzle. And I managed to get it a day ahead and it was like everything that I wanted and it felt like closure and I felt so like happy and excited and creative and I started working on my novel again for the like, first time in like two months and everything felt manageable and great. Like, like there was so much that I had to deal with but I knew I could deal with it. And then I woke up Wednesday I remember waking up an hour early. I guess I was just that stressed, I don't know. And I said, you know, to myself, it's, it's still an hour before you have to get up. Like, don't check the news, just go back to sleep. Everything's gonna be fine, you just need sleep. I have very poor sense of self-control, so I checked the news. When the shock wore off, I just started sobbing. And then I dragged myself out of bed and into the shower and I started crying again. As a queer woman, from a Jewish family. I have known for many years of the different reasons I have to be afraid for my life. And they're not even the same reasons as many other people. And so far I've been lucky uh, in that I haven't faced too much. Most of what I've had to go through is just from being a woman and being harassed. But it's hard waking up and knowing not just that some people want you dead, but that a quarter of your country wants you dead, or at least doesn't care, it's very difficult. And I know that a lot of people feel this constantly, and maybe I was just optimistic, idealistic. And I had to teach that morning, and I remember going into class and I just said, I'm gonna be straight with you guys, I've cried twice already today, we're gonna get through class, but it's not gonna be fun or happy and I'm not going to be able to be the cheerful person that I try to be when I teach. And one of my students even asked why and I said I'm just not even going to answer that question. And when class ended, I just felt like I had to say something. And so I had said, and they were so quiet, I was amazed by how quiet everybody was. Nobody got up to leave. I just was on the verge of tears and I just said, like, do not let hate win. That how we go forward in this is important and that we have to be kind to each other and we cannot let hatred win. I don't think those are my exact words. I don't remember what my exact words were. It was a very weird day. And I think that's important right now that we have to be there for each other. And we have to look out for each other and support each other and protect each other. And we cannot let this pass uncontested because the night of the night, 9th of November to the 10th, is the anniversary of Kristallnacht. And I live right next to Philadelphia. And during that night last week, um, people, nobody knows who, as far as I know, uh, vandalized shop windows and were at Sig Heil and drew swastikas. And like, this is real. This is happening again as always, to never stop, I don't know. But now these people are validated because you can be like that and you can be the president of the United States. So it's important how we move forward. And I wish that I had time for those protests. I wish I had time for NaNoWriMo. I've been trying to work on my novel as well, but I have two seminar papers that I need to finish and a five page paper that I need to do, which shouldn't take too much, but I have to actually like do it. And if anything, that I'm kind of thriving on two things, spite and the need to not thrive on spite because that is not who I am and maybe who I am is I'm very empathic I, I just have this overabundance of empathy and I always have since I was a kid and maybe I just forgot that other people don't know how to feel like that and don't know how to feel for other people maybe that was it so part of me has just been aggressively listening to the Hamilton soundtrack and this one song from Spies Are Forever called We Love the Prince, which is all about how uh, in politics where you sort of on camera and in front of people pretend that you like this political leader and then behind them you just tear them down. And uh, which is amusing and truthful and sort of cathartic to listen to. But the other part of me has just been 
remembering my favorite character from all of Star Trek is Dr. Bashir and sort of his idealism and his compassion and his inability to understand how people can simply forget how to care and cause other people to suffering out of their apathy. That is just the mindset that I need to maintain for the next however long this lasts, which might be the rest of my life. And if anything, that sort of renewed my need to do what it is that I am doing, because I think that I have the freedom in a way to choose what I study, and not entirely because, you know, classes are limited, and but within those classes, we often are given freedom for our seminar papers. And I'm glad that I'm studying what I chose already. Um, right now, I've been researching the semantic history of monstrosity, and I think that is important. And with the other one, I wanted to study 1811 by Anna Letitia Barbald, and I now, sort of what she's trying to say during a really contentious time period, and that poem ruined her career, and sort of placing that within this idea of patriotism and placing that poem within economic crisis and war and all of these other sort of apocalyptic tales and romantic sensibility. And I think that understanding that could even be important because I'm looking for different ways to say things, different words and different understandings to talk about things that need to be talked about. So I wish that I had more to say on that, but I guess all I really can say for now is that, that we can't just let this go and we can't normalize it and we can't pretend that this is okay. I decided last week when I realized that I couldn't say uh, this president-elect's name without feeling physically ill, that I just wouldn't and I would never say his name again and I will never refer to him as the president. I will never normalize this. I will never accept it. We'll never pretend that it's okay. We have elected a fascist as the leader of our country. And it's not just us. This is happening over Europe as well, and in the UK. And it's something that needs to be talked about and needs to be addressed. People like to think that, oh, it's not, you know, it's not a big deal. I mean, things can't be that bad, you know? Things can only be prevented by those who work to prevent them. If you tell yourself it's gonna be okay, but you do nothing to make it okay, then it's not going to be okay. So speak up when you can and have each other's backs. Wish I could say more on the matter, but I have to go to class.